our most overlooked natural resource is literally underfoot. Soil is a living dynamic system. It's the place where the Earth's geosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere interact. Soil is the mix of minerals, organic material, moisture and air that makes a home for billions of animals, plants and fungal species. Without soil, we would not exist. Healthy soil is the foundation for our food system. It purifies the water that we drink and it's critical in its role in the regulation of greenhouse gases because it's our major store of carbon. There are 70,000 different kinds of soil on Earth. These are the product of the original parent material, the climate of the area, the amount of organic matter that's in the soil and the environmental conditions under which the soil is actually being produced. We categorize soil by its texture. This is a sandy soil. It has no water holding capacity. Water just goes straight through it. It holds no nutrients. A loamy soil has a lot more organic matter in it. It's perfect for growing plants. And a clay soil is exactly what you think it is. It has a lot of clay in it. It's very sticky. Plant roots have a hard time growing in it. Lighter colored soils like sandy soils have low fertility and they're very poor for plants to grow in. On the other hand, darker colored soils have a lot of organic matter in them. This organic matter holds a lot of nutrients for the plants to grow. Normally it would be nitrogen and phosphorus, but it also indicates a better carbon holding capacity in the soil. Healthy soil is teeming with a diversity of organisms from the microscopic to the macroscopic. These organisms move from the organic layer in the top of the soil down to the soil layers below and back up again. In fact, you'll find more organisms in a tablespoon of soil than there are people on planet Earth. This community of organisms performs a vital function. Dead and decaying plant and animal materials fall onto the soil, where decomposers such as pill bugs and worms speed up the process. These animals break down complex molecules in their guts and release carbon and nutrients such as nitrogen and minerals. Smaller soil decomposers such as fungi, bacteria and archaea continue this process. Soil microbes tend to make up the bulk of the organic matter below the surface. There's actually more microbes per kilogram of soil than there are anything else, and those microbes are extraordinarily important for soil carbon sequestration. Trees and other plants rely on these nutrients as they play a role in their carbon cycle. Plants remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. Carbon is fixed in the form of carbohydrates. In turn, these carbohydrates arrive at our table in many forms. Sometimes they become other animals first. We read products of the soil and we wear products of the soil. Another irreplaceable function of soil is that it acts as a water filter. Gravity draws water down through the layers of the soil until it meets an impenetrable layer where it gathers as groundwater. As water trickles through, contaminants are trapped in tiny openings in the soil. Bacteria and other microorganisms in the ground filter water by removing carbon dioxide, insoluble substances and pathogens. This is particularly true in wetlands where a complex mixture of soil and soil organisms and microbes help filter water through percolation and metabolism. Soil is an absolutely marvelous system. It works really well all by itself in its own particular time scale unless you abuse it. We use soil as a holding facility for solid waste, as a filter for our wastewater from our cities, towns and agriculture, and as a dumping ground for toxic waste. Our soil is being blown off and washed down streams and rivers. Precious topsoil is pouring off the continent and into the depths of the ocean at a rate that is almost impossible to replace. Why? Because making soil is an exceedingly slow process. Plants play a role in the weathering of rock into soil. Their strong roots can enter fissures in rock, wedging the rock apart and breaking off tiny chips. Fungi can grow into the spaces or pores in rocks that are impossible for roots to enter. The fungi release acids and enzymes that are capable of solubilizing the rock. Burrowing animals are a natural disturbance. During their activities, animals will bring soil from the lower layers back up to the surface and take organic material back down to the lower soil layers. On the other hand, agricultural tilling, construction, mining and quarrying 
are all unnatural disturbances. They bring rocks up to the surface where they are mixed with topsoil. The resulting material is extraordinarily hard to restore back to any level of normal functioning. Water is also a soil builder. It penetrates into the fissures of the rock. When the water freezes, it expands, wedging the rock apart. When the ice thaws, it leaves behind a slightly larger fissure that allows more water to seep in, freeze and expand once more. As this freeze and thaw cycle continues, tiny chips of rock continually break off. These tiny chips continue to be weathered into smaller and smaller pieces by erosion, chemical reactions. At some point, they become small enough that organic material can actually cling to these particles. It may take thousands of years to build and rebuild even the thinnest layer of soil. Archaeologists have determined that the collapse of a number of ancient civilizations, including the Mayans in Central America, may have been due to the mismanagement of their soils. And if that is the case, then soil science truly is the key to our future.